everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Stahl, and I work for Allotropia, and um, want to uh, tell you a bit about uh, work I've been doing during the past year uh, related to uh, PDF and uh, universal uh, accessibility. So, um, first, um, definition of accessibility, which, um, as it happens, um, uh, you already saw a couple of hours ago in a talk by another Michael who uh, uh, also happened to talk about access accessibility. Um, so, yeah, uh, but for, for the purpose of this talk, we want to uh, talk about uh, document accessibility. So here the problem is that LibreOffice um, um, produces PDF documents and we want these uh, documents to uh, contain the necessary uh, data so that um, a um, PDF reader and, um, a, and a screen reader that talks to the PDF reader can uh, make the document accessible to uh, visually uh, impaired um, users. So um, um, first, what um, relevant, relevant uh, documents and standards are there that can help us in this task? So. Um, the, of course, we start with the uh, standard for PDF itself, which uh, was initially developed by Adobe, but uh, these days it is actually an uh, international standard. Uh, the most recent uh, version uh, came out a couple of uh, years ago, and um, uh, I recently found out that um, there is an organization called the uh, PDF Association, and uh, they make this uh, ISO standard available as, um, as a so-called sponsored standard from their website. So you can um, give up uh, a couple of your uh, personal, uh, personal data and um, download the uh, standard document uh, free of charge from their website, basically. Um, yeah, and the uh, second uh, relevant uh, standard is ISO 14. Uh, 289, uh, which is the uh, PDF UA standard. Uh, that one, uh, unfortunately, you have to buy it from uh, ISO for a lot of money. Um, yeah, but uh, this uh, is really uh, important because it contains many uh, requirements uh, what um, a PDF document that is accessible uh, should look like, should contain. Um, yeah, and then uh, other uh, interesting um, uh, documents are uh, from the PDF Association, the uh, so-called um, Matterhorn Protocol, which is essentially a checklist um, containing uh, many uh, criteria where you can evaluate whether uh, your PDF uh, document um, is uh, accessible, if it meets them all. And then there is the um, Tagged PDF Best Practice Guide, um, which uh, also contains uh, many hints about um, um, how exactly the um, tag structure in the PDF um, should look like. It fills in a bit of uh, gaps that the ISO standard uh, leaves open and so on. And then from, an from another corner from the W3C, there is the uh, web a content accessibility guidelines document, which is mostly about um, HTML and such things, but there are also um, um, some hints regarding uh, PDF. Okay. So um, another thing that is uh, very useful um, is that there are validators where you can check your PDF document if it is um, if it uh, implements the recommendations and requirements uh, successfully. Uh, so firstly, um, there is Vera PDF, which is actually open source, and uh, it's uh, conveniently available uh, as a flat pack from FlatHub. And um, its user interface is a bit clunky, uh, a Java Swing uh, kind of thing, uh, which you can see here on the uh, slide. And uh, essentially, you uh, choose the uh, PDF file, and then in the uh, flavor uh, box, you select PDF UA, 
and you click the execute button and uh, it produces an HTML file with uh, some warnings or errors. Um, yeah, but uh, what's important to notice is that uh, a valid validator is not a panacea. Um, so, um, because the, the validator, uh, uh, as a matter of uh, principle, can only, uh, can only detect if your PDF document is inconsistent, but the actual uh, problem uh, of document accessibility is that uh, the source document has some sort of semantically meaningful structure and you have to map that uh, semantic structure into the PDF document. And the validator, of course, doesn't know what the uh, structure of the source document is. So, um, yeah, there are many problems it, uh, uh, that can still be there, even if the validator says uh, you have uh, no issues. But it's useful. And uh, then the uh, other uh, validator that I've uh, used, um, actually there are more validators than these, but, uh, and I've been told that some of them are even better, but uh, I have used only uh, these two. Uh, this one is called PDF Accessibility Checker, and uh, it's only available for uh, Windows. Um, the main user interface uh, looks like here on the left. You have um, a basic, basic uh, overview of, the, um, of uh, any warnings that have been found. Um, and then there are some additional features. So with uh, this results and detail button, you see uh, a window pops up and you can see every individual uh, warning. Then you have a screen reader preview, which uh, essentially shows you the uh, document uh, structure without any graphical uh, fluff around it. Um, and the most useful feature is here this uh, logical structure button, which opens the uh, dialog here on the right hand side. And uh, yeah, this essentially uh, has, uh, sh shows you the structure tree. So 95% uh, of uh, PDF accessibility is that there is a uh, tree of structural elements in the PDF document. And yeah, that has to map to uh, to the structure of the source document and uh, the elements in the tree uh, should be in the logical reading order of, of, uh, of the document. And what you can see in this example is that um, there is one element selected here, this span element, and then you can see in the top right corner uh, the uh, text that corresponds uh, to this span element on the page is, is highlighted. So you can very easily see um, um, what your tree elements uh, refer to. And then you can see from, from the tree, the parent node of the span element is uh, something called standard. And this is a paragraph element. We name the paragraph elements in PDF after the paragraph standard. Uh, after the paragraph style, which in this case is standard. Um, and if you look a bit further up, there are a couple of footnotes. So for footnotes, there is a special structure where we first have the uh, label of the footnote in a label element. The label element contains a link element. And the link element con contains a link annotation. And that means you can click on the footnote number on, in your PDF reader and it will uh, jump to the uh, anchor of the footnote. And then uh, what follows is a paragraph with the paragraph style footnote. So yeah, that's what the structure tree looks like. Then, um, yeah, um, most of the uh, of the work was actually that uh, while PDF uh, while LibreOffice already produced the PDF structure tree. Um, there were many uh, um, details that were wrong or uh, things that were missing, incomplete. Um, and uh, we already had this um, PDF accessibility meta bug where many uh, volunteers and uh, uh, also uh, Gabor uh, did a lot of work to find these uh, issues over the years. So thank you all for that. And uh, yeah, this is just uh, a list of the uh, commits which I did, which uh, I don't know, 60 or something like that to uh, fix all of them. Won't, uh, of course, go into detail here. Um, 
and uh, we have also uh, added a new feature, um, namely um, uh, Microsoft Office 2019 already had this and you can uh, now also in LibreOffice uh, mark your floating objects as decorative. Um, that essentially means that uh, these uh, floating objects uh, will not appear in the PDF structure tree. They will instead be tagged as uh, artifacts. Um, and you can set this with the dialog on the right in Writer on um, Writer, uh, Frames, Images, Embedded Objects and uh, also on uh, the uh, frame styles. And if you enable this uh, decorative uh, box, then uh, you can see here the uh, description and text al alternative are disabled because if the element is not uh, is just decorative, then uh, those uh, do not make sense. And um, then we have also added this feature for uh, the uh, drawing objects and shapes. And uh, with uh, this dialog here, uh, you can set it in uh, also in calc and in impress and, and draw. Um, okay, so some of these um, uh, structure uh, tree uh, additions were um, rather complicated. So. Uh, um, one example is the, uh, the writer lists and uh, the uh, label element that should contain the number of, the, of uh, a list item. Turns out that uh, the uh, text formatting code is very complicated and the uh, data structures it uses are uh, rather non-obvious in some places um, with uh, lots of subclasses and so on. And the way the PDF is actually produced is by uh, painting the text. So the PDF is produced from the document view and not directly from the document model. Whereas the structure tree has to correspond more to the document model. Um, so it was uh, quite clear when I, uh, when I added uh, this label element export uh, that uh, I'm probably going to do it wrong. There are uh, a lot of special cases that I don't know about. Um, and so what I did is I added some simple asserts um, about rather obvious things like if there is a numbering portion inside of the text formatting uh, data structure, then we have to open the label uh, element once. And if we have opened it once, then we have to close it once and so on. Simple things like that. And then we have this uh, crash testing uh, server um, where every couple of days um, some tens of thousands of uh, documents are automatically loaded and exported. And uh, well, this <coughs> hit uh, a lot of these uh, special cases. And uh, eventually, over the course of a few months, uh, I was supplied with uh, all of these documents that actually contain, contain the special cases. Um, and then I could uh, fix them. So this uh, worked out uh, rather nicely. And I, I, I would have maybe thought of, of um, a third of these special cases ahead of time with, uh, with a lot of effort, but never all of them. And it's just really non-obvious things. Like you would think that uh, the first line of a uh, paragraph would contain the, uh, the uh, numbering, but actually the first line can contain only uh, some special portion where the paragraph is blocked by, a float by, by some other floating object. And non-obvious things like that. Um, yeah. Then another very difficult problem was the uh, media shapes. So we can have uh, embedded videos essentially in the, do in the document. And uh, there are um, some requirements for uh, what this should look like essentially if you do it well in PDF. 
so I made this uh, diagram where every one of these boxes is a, a PDF object. So uh, at the top, uh, at, at the, uh, in the left, we have uh, the, um, there is an object for the page in the PDF file. And this points to another object, which uh, is the p uh, page content stream. And uh, this is essentially the drawing commands that uh, put everything that you see uh, when you look at it uh, in a PDF reader on the page. So this is PDF drawing commands. Then in the middle, there is an annotation object. So um, to make this into actually a video, um, you have to use an annotation object. This uh, is a screen annotation. It contains um, some metadata like uh, what uh, MIME type this uh, thing is and uh, what its uh, dimensions are and, uh, and uh, pointed to some <coughs> other object which contains the actual binary data of the video. Um, yeah, so this enables the PDF reader to actually play the video. And uh, then on the right hand side, you can see there is a structure element for the uh, paragraph where the uh, shape is anchored. So for floating objects, the way it works is that the floating object is a child in the structure tree of its uh, anchor paragraph. And uh, in the lower right, there is a structure element for the annotation itself. And the problem here was that uh, this, um, this structure element for the annotation was missing. And yeah, in order to add that, we have to uh, have um, pointers to both the page and the page content where, um, of course, not to the whole of the page content, but somewhere inside of this list of drawing commands, there is, um, uh, there is uh, this thing here, uh, anode with a, a property uh, MCID. Uh, this is a um, marked content. And so somehow this uh, structure element must uh, reference to this marked content ID zero. And then here between BDC and AMC, this is what is actually um, drawing the uh, thing on the, on the screen. And in addition to that, we need uh, a pointer from the structure element to the annotation element and also a pointer back from the annotation to the structure element. And the structure element also needs to point it to its parent in the structure tree and uh, of course in the other way. So, okay, now uh, um, why is this difficult? Um, so the problem I think is uh, meta files. Um, how does a writer actually generate a PDF file? So firstly, um, a writer um, uh, creates all of the annotation objects that are in the document um, with the help of a special VCL class called PDFX Outdef Data. This is the first step. So, uh, and the second step is that a writer uh, paints its own paragraphs and so on uh, with the VCL API. Um, and uh, it records this to a VCL meta file uh, together yeah. with this uh, additional PDF uh, data class. Then the third step is writer paints the floating objects. And the floating po uh, objects uh, are handled uh, via the uh, draw page and uh, this creates a lot of uh, drawing layer primitives. Um, and then the drawing layer uh, paints these primitives uh, via the VCL meta file processor to D and this uh, is all recorded into the same uh, VCL meta file there. And then the last step is that VCL replace the recorded meta file, which is now finished, together with the, uh, with the additional uh, PDF data uh, to a PDF writer class. And uh, now uh, I looked at this and uh, was wondering what value is actually the meta file adding to any of this. And I just uh, asked Armin uh, like an hour ago and he said, nothing, it's complete nonsense. The reason why the meta file <laughs> exists here is that the PDF export is older than drawing layer. That's the whole reason. So 
If we go back here, this thing in the middle is uh, created in step one. Uh, this part here is created in step three. Um, and somehow you, you need to find um, th this part is, is created uh, also in step three. And this one is created in step two. And so somehow you need to, to, to find uh, these uh, ob other objects that, uh, that were created at a completely different time. So yeah, this took me some time to get working. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, what other changes were there in LibreOffice 7.6? So everything uh, related to the PDF export uh, improvements uh, should be in the 7.6 version, not necessarily in 7.6.0, but um, yeah. Um, we needed to change the default version of PDF that is, uh, that is uh, exported to version 1.7. Uh, because it turns out that some of the um, um, uh, attributes that were needed uh, in the structure tree are uh, actually new in that version. Um, and yeah, PDF 1.7 is like uh, 15 years old uh, today, so uh, we didn't see any problem with that. Um, then uh, we um, changed the um, tag PDF option so that is uh, enabled by default. So uh, tag PDF enables the creation of the structure tree. If you, if you turn that off, you don't get the structure tree in the PDF file. And as I said, 95% uh, of this is just to get the right structure tree there, um, which of course adds a bit to the file size. Um, yeah, but uh, we think the, uh, the, the cost is uh, worth it to enable it by default. And um, then there is an additional um, option uh, where you can turn on PDF uh, universal accessibility. And this changes actually very little in the PDF file. What it does is that it adds a PDF UA tag to the PDF metadata. And then uh, in the dialog, it disables various other options that are incompatible with uh, accessibility. Like at the bottom, there is something about reference X objects. I don't know what that actually does, but it's not allowed. So we turn it off. Um, and then it runs, when you click the export button, uh, it runs the accessibility check, um, which is another dialog uh, that shows you warning uh, about the uh, document content because it turns out um, the PDF export uh, is not solely responsible for the accessibility of your PDF file. Uh, if the user just puts something in that, uh, that, that, that is uh, poor, then uh, the PDF export can mag cannot magically fix it. Like for example, there's a requirement that the uh, first heading has to be uh, at level one. And if you start your document with a heading level five, then, well, uh, it's going to be uh, um, bad. So the dialogue will warn about it. Um, yeah. Um, and if you want to know more about the accessibility check uh, dialog, then you can go to uh, this talk by my uh, colleague uh, Balash, which is uh, in uh, 90 minutes or so uh, today. Um, yeah, about accessibility improvements in Writer. And uh, another one, uh, another um, one of my colleagues, uh, Samuel, uh, is also talking about the accessibility check and namely how he uh, made it possible to uh, have it not only as a dialogue but also in the sidebar, uh, which may be more convenient, uh, yeah, which is also today. So I was not the only one who was working on this. Um, right. And of course, um, none of this uh, would have been possible without uh, funding by our uh, customer uh, data port. So thank you for that. And uh, that was all. Um, are there, uh, do we have time for questions? Oh, we must have time for questions. <laughs>
tag or the tag tree to then uh, reconstitute document structure when a PDF is imported. So the, the first question is, is if you if you personally or you know other people who have had experience with the tagging and have started to or are planning to work on improving the import filter to use this information. And the, the second question is that if we can use such information even if LibreOffice then generated. So if we can use like a tag structure that may be Microsoft Word or other you know, common PDF generators and uh, uh, insert. Um, okay, so um, yeah, the structure tree just uh, contains a lot of the structure, but uh, it does not contain um, everything. So, uh, in particular, with regard to formatting information, uh, most of that is, is missing. So, for example, uh, for uh, spans inside of a paragraph, we currently uh, export language and uh, if it's superscript or subscript, and if it's uh, underline, strikeout, or overline. I think that is all. And uh, yeah, in, in, if you look at format character, there are a lot, of, a lot more things you can, you can do there. So, um, but this would be a huge improvement, because now that we find the raw PDF without tagging doesn't even have the information of what's within same paragraph. Yes. You have to yes. Th that that would. Yes, or or you just uh, leave it like partitioned into lines so, or scratch the text. Yes, of course. So so you would get a, a much better result than if you had no structure tree in the, in the PDF file, but you should not uh, ex uh, expect this to to be a perfect result. Another question. Um, where can, can we maybe experience how this tagging information is, uh, is used in, uh, in, I mean, other than programmatically? I mean, how it, it, it would appear or be communicated to, to people with disabilities, seeing that how most of us don't, don't have those, those you know, more serious disabilities? Um. Yeah, you can you can just um, use the uh, pack, which can uh, show you the structure tree. Um, I guess that is the most uh, obvious way I know. I think the uh, Adobe uh, Acrobat also has similar features. I have never used it. But it won't. So it, suppose I'm blind. Obviously, this uh, won't, won't help me. I, I want, I want it, as a, as a non-blind person, I want to experience how a blind person would, ex would, would experience the, the tagging in a, mm. a, a reader or a, I don't know, whatever um, is used to, to, to make PDFs accessible. Yeah, anyway. um, well, you, you, you could just uh, set up um, a PDF reader and a screen reader. And then I think that is just the, the, the you have to just uh, try it out. I think uh, that's the, the the how do you say the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating or something like that. Okay. So uh, yeah, the Daisy Consortium they have a lot of videos all about accessibility and all this stuff. I highly recommend just checking out their YouTube channel. Uh, there's tons of videos on uh, what's showing what's their names again? Daisy. So D Daisy uh, D A I S Y all in caps. Okay. And look it up. Um, their YouTube channel has a lot of videos on it. Thanks. Uh, uh, you mentioned that you can make elements as decorative. Yes. Is there also some kind of visual thing while you are editing the document to show the which elements have been like that way? Um, at the moment, no. You just have to look at every single one. Um, I believe they do, but um, to be sure, uh, ask uh, in the talk by Balash later. Okay. 
Thanks. <laughs>